Hello and welcome to Easy Peasy. This is Seher and the topic we are going to discuss today is called as elements, atoms, shells, subshells and orbitals. If we look at the planet Earth and the things that are present around us, whether living or non-living, everything that we can see are made up of elements. And up till now, 118 elements are discovered. These elements can be present in the form of gas, liquid, or solid state, depending on the particles that are present within these elements. If those particles are far away, then they will be in gas state. If they are a little bit near to each other, then that will be a liquid state. And if they are pretty much close to each other, then they will be in solid state. Now, the particles that are making these elements are called as atom. Atoms have three different parts. One is the electron that is revolving around the nucleus. Electrons have negative charge. Inside the nucleus, we have two more particles. One is proton that have positive charge on it, and one is neutron that doesn't have any charge. Now let's take an example of a real atom called helium. So helium have uh, two protons and two neutrons in the nucleus, and there are two electrons in blue color that are revolving around it. The symbol of helium is He. Besides helium, we can see a number four and number two. What does that mean? Number four is the atomic mass of helium. Now, what is atomic mass? Atomic mass is the total number of protons and neutrons. So in helium, we have two neutrons that are in white color and two protons that are in red color. So two plus two is equal to four. That is the atomic mass of helium. The two that is present at the bottom is basically the atomic number of helium. And what is the meaning of atomic number? That means the number of protons present in that element. Number of protons always remains the same within the element. And if they are going to change, they will change the element as well. But number of neutrons can change within one element. And if they are going to change themselves within an element, that will be called as isotopes. For example, we are taking hydrogen atom here. And we can see that there are three different type of isotopes present within hydrogen element. In the first isotope, we have one proton and we have one electron. This hydrogen is a normal hydrogen that doesn't have any neutrons in it. If a hydrogen have one neutron in it, it is still hydrogen, but it is the isotope of hydrogen called as deuterium. And if there are two neutrons present inside this atom, it is still hydrogen, but it is the isotope of hydrogen called as tritium. Now, some elements make isotopes that are not stable in the normal environment. And those type of isotopes, in order to stabilize themselves, will release radiations from them, and then they will be called as radioisotopes. These radiations are the result of decaying of the nucleus present in that element. Radioisotopes will be discussed in detail in a separate video. Okay, back to helium atom. Now, we're done with nucleus. Let's talk about the electrons present in that helium atom. We can see in this picture that there are two electrons revolving around the nucleus inside the helium element. We can show this picture in a simple way like this. Now in the second picture, we can see that these two electrons are revolving around the nucleus at a specific distance. And this distance is depending on the energy level or principal quantum number. In the first picture, these two electrons are not revolving in the same circle. Rather, in this picture, you can see two circles made by these two electrons independently. Well, in this picture, these two electrons are revolving in the same shell because the distance present between the nucleus and the shell is the same. But this picture is showing us that within a shell, the two electrons revolve in the opposite direction. So this is a more appropriate picture of showing how the electrons are moving, rather this one, but it is more convenient to see see that there is only one shell present in that helium atom. In order to understand a shell, let's start with the hydrogen atom because this is the most simplest atom of all. Hydrogen have one proton and one electron revolving around the nucleus. Now this electron does not stay at this position all the time. Sometime it can be present here, sometime it is present there, or sometime it is present here. 
But let's say 90% of the time, this electron is detected in this range. So that's how we can see that this is the energy level or principal quantum number of hydrogen. If we take a more bigger atom, we can see that there are more shells present in that atom. Now in this particular atom, we can see we have one, two, three, four, and five shells here. The number of electrons that can accommodate themselves within each shell is represented by 2 n raised to power 2. And if we apply this formula, we can see that in the first shell that is near to the nucleus can contain 2 electrons. The second one will have 8. The third one will have 18 and the fourth will have 32. That's how the electrons will accommodate themselves within each shell. Now shell or energy level is not as simple as we can see in this picture. These shells or energy levels can further divide themselves into subshells. As you can see in this picture that the first shell have one subshell and that is the S subshell. The second shell have two subshells in it and that is S and P. The third shell have three subshells in it and that includes S, P and D and fourth shell have four subshells in it that includes S, P, D and F. Now let's see how electrons will accommodate themselves in each subshell. Let's take hydrogen atom again. Hydrogen have one electron that is revolving around the nucleus. If this electron will gain energy somehow by radiations or any other way, this electron will jump into the next shell or the higher energy level as you can see in this picture. So the first shell where this electron normally exists is called as 1s. And the second shell where this electron jumped itself into is called as 2s. Now let's assume that this electron is present in 2s and will gain more energy. So if this electron will gain more energy, the movement of this electron will change from circular motion into a static wave-like shape or dumbbell shape as you can see in this picture. With this much energy, this electron is still present in the same shell but in a different subshell. So now this electron is present in the second subshell and that is the P subshell. The movement of electron in a dumbbell shape is called as orbital. Now we have three different types of orbitals in P subshell. In this picture, as you can see, this movement is along x-axis, so this is 2px. It can also be along y-axis, so it will be called as 2py, or it can be along z-axis, called as 2pz. Now let's add up all the information that we discussed up till now about shells, subshells, and orbitals. The first element is hydrogen that we discussed up till now. Hydrogen have one electron in its outermost shell, so it will be present in 1s subshell. And the electronic configuration of hydrogen is 1s. If we talk about helium, helium have two electrons in its first shell and they will be accommodated by 1s subshell but these two electrons will move in opposite direction. So the electronic configuration of helium is 1s2. As you can see, these two lines are showing that these two electrons are moving in opposite direction. If we talk about lithium, lithium atomic number is 3. So it have three electrons in total. The first two electrons will get accommodate in 1s subshell. But this third electron will move into the next shell and that is the 2s. So the electronic configuration of lithium is 1s2 and 2s1. Over here you can see that in the first shell, two electrons are moving in opposite direction and one electron is present in the 2s subshell. Let's talk about carbon now. Carbon have total 6 number of electrons in its atom. 2 electrons will get accommodate in 1s2 and 4 electrons will be present in the second shell. Now in the second shell we have 2 subshells and that is s and p. So the third and fourth electron will get accommodate by 2s and the other 2 electrons will get accommodate by p orbitals. It can be along x-axis, y-axis or z-axis. So the electronic configuration of this carbon atom is 1s2, 2s2, and 2p2. If we look over here, we can see that two electrons are present in opposite direction in 1s2, 
two electrons are present in 2s2 in opposite direction and one electron is present in each p orbital. It can be px and py, it can be py and pz, it can be pz and px depending on the existence of electron in that subshell. Let's move on to the next element and that is neon. In neon, we have total 10 number of electrons in that atom. Two electrons will get accommodated by 1s2. Two electrons will get accommodated by 2s2. And the rest of the six electrons will be accommodated by three orbitals of p subshell. So it will be present in all these subshells. Let's see the electronic configuration of that atom. So as you can see over here, the 1s2 have two electrons in opposite direction, 2s2 has two electrons in its opposite direction, and 2p6 is over here showing us that they have three different type of orbitals, and in each orbital we can accommodate two two electrons in its opposite direction. Let's take another atom, and now we are taking sodium this time. Sodium have total 11 number of electrons in its atom. Again, we know how to accommodate 10 number of electrons, but the last electron will move on into the next shell, and that is the 3s shell. So the electronic configuration of the sodium is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, and 3s1. And you can see the orbitals or movement of electrons in each subshell. And that's how the atom accommodate all the electrons in their shells, subshells, and orbitals. Furthermore, with the bigger atoms, we can move on to the next subshells and that is the D subshell and F subshell. In D subshell, we have five different type of orbitals there and each orbital can accommodate two electrons in it. So in total, D subshell will accommodate 10 electrons. If we talk about F subshell, F subshell have seven different type of orbitals there and each orbital can accommodate two electrons in it. So in total, F subshell can accommodate 14 electrons. Now let's summarize this information in one picture. So as we know, we have one shell. In that shell, we can have subshells that can be S, P, D, and F. Within these subshells, we can find different type of orbitals. So in S subshell, we have only one orbital. In P subshell, we have three different type of orbitals. In D subshell, we have five different type of orbitals. And in F subshell, we have seven different type of orbitals. And each orbital can accommodate two electrons that are moving in the opposite direction. Okay, last but not least, valence shell and valence electron. We can see we have different type of elements here. And every element have its unique properties, both chemical and physical. The chemical properties are mostly dependent on the electrons that are present in the outermost shell. That's why the outermost shell is also called as valence shell and the electrons that are present in the outermost shell are called as valence electrons. In this picture, as you can see, we have three different type of elements, helium, lithium, and sodium. Though helium and lithium are present side by side with having only one electron extra in lithium, but their properties are entirely different from each other. But if we look at lithium and sodium, we can see that their chemical properties are a lot similar. And the reason is they have only one electron in their outermost shell. The details of valence shells and valence electrons and their bonding factor will be explained in a separate video. That's it for now. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like it, please subscribe our channel. Thank you. Bye-bye.